Hello, welcome all. Welcome in another important video in a Node.js. And in this video, we'll be looking into clusters. So as we know that Node.js works on a single threaded programming technique where by default, Node.js only use single core of your, of your CPU. So if you have multiple cores in your CPU, then that will not be used by Node.js. If you're running your API server, then that means the amount of request is gonna served by your server will be handled by your single core of your CPU. So let's understand how we can distribute a load. The capacity of single core is limited. If multiple people want to access your server, that means your server will simply not able to respond all of them. So in that case, load distribution becomes really important. So load distribution is nothing but distributing your entire load of your API server in between your different cores of your CPU. So with that way, you can serve more people using the same configuration of your server. So let's understand how we can do it. So in order to implement load distribution, cluster module helps us to do that. So cluster module helps us to create worker processes so that worker processes works for our main thread. So main thread can allocate task to each worker thread and the worker thread will take care of actual execution. So with this way, we can distribute a load of our main thread. So before we start with actual distribution, let's simply create one ExpressJS server and try to understand how it works. So here I'm going to try creating new ExpressJS server. dot listen and I want my server to listen at port number 400 alright so let's create one simple get method simply create get API and as a callback we'll simply write one message let's say okay so now we here we have created one simple express.js server so let's try to execute this through the browser so if i go here and use port number 400 well, my bad, I haven't really start our server. So in order to start server, I'm using NodeMon package. So this package will help you in a development phase. So you don't have to restart your server again. This package itself will take care of restarting your server. So let's simply use our start command, which is this one. So as you can see here, we got our server up and running. If I go inside the browser and refresh this, refresh this so as you can see here we got our first message all right if i go inside activity monitor as you can see here we got two node.js processes well this activity monitor is nothing but default software and it gives you an idea about how many processes is currently running in your pc and how much cpu it is occupying how much memory it is occupying and what is its port number all this type of information you will get with the help of system monitor. So if you're using Windows operating system, its name will be task manager and in Mac, they'll be different. But the intention behind this software is the same that it gives information about the processes you are running. If I don't use any filter, as you can see, this many processes is running currently in my PC. So let's just simply sorted by node so as you can see here we got two node.js processes running so it is because i'm using nodemon package which itself using one node.js process and we are starting our server that is our second process so if i simply don't use nodemon and i use node cluster node.js and if i go back in our activity monitor as you can see here there is only one process with name 
node so that means node mon is using one process let's start our server again with node mon now up to this point we can see here there is one single process actually running our code all right so which is not good if i kill our main process so i'm expecting that our server should stop working as you can see here our server has crashed so if i go inside browser and refresh this it will simply not work well this can happen in any time your port number will get killed by any reason due to lot of load or due to uh, not availability of ram reason could be anything but this is simply not good thing because you are just rely on single or single process which can get killed any time okay so now what we can do to solve this problem and how we can distribute our load so that even if any single process got killed by any reason our server will keep on running well cluster model helps us to do the same thing let's go inside the code and import cluster module if i go inside node.js website you will get a really nice documentation on clusters if you want you can read this also so i'm going to go here and simply import cluster all right well you don't need to install this explicitly because it is a native module and it comes with the node.js installation all right so the first step will be how many number of worker threads you are going to create well if you want to understand how many number of how many maximum number of worker threads you can create just simply needs to write one console.log and then simply put cluster dot get max listener well this is the function and it will return a value so as you can see here we got number 10 so that means 10 number of worker 10 number of worker threads I can create at this point of time well logically this much worker threads you can create but if you think if you go more in deeper and understand how it works so you will get to know that you just don't need to create that much you don't have that much hardware which will work and serve request for this many worker threads well actual number will be the number of cores you have in your PC or laptop has quad core processor sometimes it is octa core processor that means four logically distributed parts of your CPU so you can sep separately run your code on that course well if you want to know how many cores you have in your CPU so you just have to simply write a line of code using OS module so as you can see inside the node this documentation itself they have given this line of code this will give you number of cores you have in your CPU so if I put this here and try to print its output as you can see here I have four cores in my CPU so logically if I want to create and distribute a load of my node.js program I will simply create four worker threads because if I create more worker threads it is of no use because if fifth worker threads try to execute something it has to wait until any one of four worker threads stop working so logically we are doing the same thing all right so let's simply go inside our code again and try put one simple if block now this if block will basically filter out is it a main thread or the worker thread so if it is master thread will simply try to create multiple worker threads all right so simply create cluster dot fork this method will create worker thread well cluster use child process itself internally so if you are comfortable with using child process you can create your worker thread by child process also inside the else block i'll simply put whole entire code we have written here all right with this way we have well let's simply remove these consoles and inside of it i'll put well let's not put anything for now 
All right. So if I go back here in activity monitor, logically it should give us count three. So as you can see here, we get three processes with name node. All right. One is from node mon. Another one is our main thread, and then the another one is the thread which we have created using cluster dot fog, which is worker thread. All right. If I try to copy this and try to multi and try to create multiple worker threads. So currently I'm creating four multiple worker threads plus our node mon thread and then our node.js. So if I simply save this, I should be getting six processes with node.js name. So as you can see here, we got six processes here in system monitor. Well, if I try to kill any process here, then now we have only four processes running. Previously, when we kill our process, our server stopped working but now at this time as you can see our server is still running so if i refresh this browser page again i mean i'm still getting output so let's kill another one you have to make sure that you should not kill main process or main thread so in order to understand difference between main and worker thread is you just have to simply put console dot log and then the process dot pid if i save this again and you have to put this console inside this is master so with this way i'll get port number or pid of my main thread and i shouldn't and now i can kill other processes other than this 10808 so i can kill this also i can kill this also and this one also see now we have only three processes running let me kill this also well i forgot i shouldn't kill node mon process also so i'm going to start our process with cluster dot js it is giving us an output saying that bind execution is null so let me clear this well let's try to use another port number let's say 8000 now everything is working so this is our main process and i can kill any other process i want so these are some of the processes running from our previous code which we which we have to kill all right so if i kill any one of this let's say i want to kill this one as you can see here we can still get an output so with this way we can distribute a load as well as we can we can make sure that our uptime will always be high and downtime always be low so now here problem here is if any process got killed so you have to start another process then how will you figure out when process got killed So first of all let's try to improve our code and then we will see how we can restart our process when if it got killed. So I'm putting simple for loop here because I want to create as much as cores I have in a CPU. I want that many number of worker threads. So if I start with if I start with the zero then the number of CPUs should be lesser than the count of cores i have in my pc so if i start this and let me close this just below it okay so now we are done with our coding now let's try to figure out when any cluster got killed or 
when it started. So cluster module also allows us to subscribe to lifecycle methods. So let's see how many lifecycle methods we have. If I simply put cluster dot on, and here as you can see, this many lifecycle methods we have. So I'm going to use only two. One is a listening, another one is exit. So if I put listening here and then put worker, all right, and if I simply put console here, so if any new worker thread created, I just want one simple message. That message will give me PID of that worker thread. So if I put console dot log here, worker dot process dot pid. And if I put here worker, okay. If I save it, let me restart my code with nodemon, say nodemon npm start cool so as you can see here we got worker port number let me simply remove this message i don't need this for now okay so now with this way you can get port number of each process using life cycle now if any port number got exit Okay, so in that case, I want to create new process. So in order to create new process, we already know what is the method. We just have to use fork function. So if I go back here and refresh this, everything is working fine. And if I go inside the task manager and try to kill process other than our main thread, our main thread is one one three four. I will try to kill process other than 1134 let's say 1142 let's kill this so as you can see here immediately new worker thread got created it is because we have written one code which is creating new worker thread when any worker thread got killed so let's put another message here exited worker okay so we can simply understand it let's go back here again and now this time let's kill this process so here we got this message and this worker thread got created newly so with this way we can always make sure that Multiple processes, multiple threads are there available to serve our request so that we can avoid downtime of our code. So with this way, we can use cluster module and cluster module gives you other lifecycle methods as well as you can try out. You can read all this entire documentation if you want to learn more about clusters. All right. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.